We are so grateful that you are here. My name is Marvin Wade. I'm a family man, a writer, a spiritual activist, and a proud Fortune community member. The arts are core to Fortune's DNA. More than 50 years ago, this organization grew out of the expressed needs of people who were directly impacted by the trauma of incarceration after performances of the play Fortune in Men's Eyes. Today, we are here because of them and all the community members since. We offer gratitude to all those that have lightened our way forward. We also call into this shared space all those that can't physically be here with us today because they are still behind the wall. Brothers and sisters, you are with us and we are with you every step of the way until you are home. And for those here in attendance, again, we thank you and truly appreciate you taking time out of your day to share in this experience. Let the freedom of expression begin. It is my pleasure to introduce our first artist, the Bluestone, Mr. Ryan Bennett. Hello, um, hello, um, how's everybody doing? My name is Ryan Bennett, Bluestone. Nice to meet you. Um, this is my poem, Eye to Eye. Eye to eye. Anxiety, tomorrow it's you and me. Thought desperately as a part of me fights for sleep. I'd rather go hungry number in the sheet than go back to begging me to listen, please. Okay, that's your cue. Get a mic to me. If it were up to you, we'd be a memory. You're not comfortable when doing most things while I sit back and dream of better ends where we understand the depends, not pretending over what pretends. You begged and I'm muted, my every urge to assist us. That's your antenna's worth, and I'll end now. You might have a better verse. Just don't say too much, the gardener's listening. Access to berry seeds shouldn't be entertaining. It's okay, it's okay, don't bother. I know the complaints. Maybe he should help think up some restraints or wake his ass up when I feel unsafe. Instead of digging old dirt, only to then complain. I'm just saying. Don't count him out. He's concerned about visitors looking around. Some look too excited to snoop around. He said it's just a warning. Be safe and sound. If not, it's going to be the same showdown. I hear you. But do you really? Yes, I'm not deaf. Oh, you don't have to share the list. I say I do as well. It isn't hell, but all I saw when we fell. I shouldn't have to explain the steps taken after. Right now, we're looking at a grave disaster. I can't help you out with work, but it's the rest I'm after. I try to shut the eyes as you remain up in mind. Things to do, that's fine, but most of them can wait. It's not often we see eye to eye in this way. Most times, you got rounds to occupy more headspace, leaving me in my corner with the love. I must say, in most ways, on most days, I'm, I, don't, I don't give my time away. But you look like you need a shoulder. I got two where you can lay. I don't have a lot to say. I can feel it in our face. Every step is in a race lasting miles that never end. You gotta take breaks. Clear your fucking head. There's no time for breaks. I have to keep success. Why should I have to speed up? Success, oh please. Don't think of that now. If that's the case, go search for Big and Cat Cow. Drop pen. Don't you even see there? That's what I mean. Even talking to yourself, you limit me. Naming who is me. Well, what about the smile? Which one? Day or night? Daytime. The last one isn't yet just right. Still a few creases. No stress, though. It's light. The one you carry works, so just hold it tight. Soon as I'm ready, we'll take it to the night. But until then, please try to rest your heights. I know we got a lot to do, but let's invest in life. Okay, all right. I try to chill. Don't try to chill. Please make it happen. The rest of you... There's something bad will happen. Rumors are starting. Tension is rising. Get up and do your thing. Ryan. Okay. The end. Here it is. Thank you, Ryan. I just want to point out to everybody, um, Ryan is zooming in from work. Right? <laughs> so he, I just want to point that out. Like, um, so let me back up a minute. Hi, I'm Jamie Maleshka. I'm lucky enough to, hi, I'm lucky enough to serve uh, as 
um, Fortune Society's creative writing teacher and uh, also the, the proud editor of Voices of Fortune, which is an annual collection of writing and artwork uh, from the Fortune community. And that the, our 2020 edition is in part what we're celebrating today, um, but overall we're celebrating community and healing and you're just about to witness and, and take in some amazing faces uh, that are incredibly talented and, and we're just super stoked uh, that, everybody, that everybody is here, so thank you. Um, as part of uh, Fortune's uh, larger agency-wide uh, response to COVID-19, we moved in the last, you know, basically since the end of March, we've moved the great bulk of programming um, whenever there's group sessions uh, virtually. So we have been meeting in these constellation of Zoom boxes uh, regularly. And the faces that you'll see, um, pandemic, uh, being alone together, uh, hasn't slowed down uh, their hearts, their beauty, their glory. And some of what you'll hear uh, tonight was generated in these um, past few months. We also want to say that this is who we are in this moment. And we know that uh, perfection has sort of never been part of, of this practice. And so how we show up in this moment is, is because we've been super excited and we're not letting anything stand in our way with sharing our hearts um, in this moment and connecting with all of you. And so, you know, possibility may exist. You may hear, but, but you need to unmute. It could come up, right? Like we also know that like someone's Wi-Fi could drop. That's good. We're good with all of that. We are proud of who we are in this moment and we're stoked to share it with you sort of, you know, if Zoom wants to play along or not. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, I would love, it's actually my deep, deep pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Helen Taylor, who will be sharing and amplifying the words of a poet that is currently incarcerated in California. His name is Liam. And so Helen will be sharing Liam's poem. It's all you, Helen. Thank you, Jamie. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. The name of Lehman poem is Mountains Always Move. Have the dignity and values. Take the time life will allow you. Accept responsibility and facility. Be laurel, be patient. Happiness is appreciation. Life is not all complications. It is all about creations. Impact the lives of others. Respect the fathers and the mothers. Share with your sisters and your brothers. Be kind to every kind you find. Pray for peace and a peace of mind. Open doors for people. Don't be fearful, stay cheerful. Be caring, but be careful. Ask questions, make confessions. And when you lose, don't lose the lessons. What, what get measured, get improved. No, all mountains always move. When you go the extra mile, smile at the harm with charm and style. Thank you. Here it is. I hope you guys are clapping at home because I'm like the nerd who's clapping from here. Yes, yes, Miss Helen. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have so uh, one of our OG poets, Felix Guzman, has been. Uh, he and I have basically been learning these ropes together. I was started off at, as a volunteer at Fortune. Oh, yeah, and he was kind enough to to just be patient with me. <laughs> so, Mr. Felix Guzman, it's all you, buddy. Hello, so hi, my name is Felix Guzman. I am going to perform a piece called The Seven Neighborhood Dias Diaspora. Um, it's actually a, um, a piece in homage to Eddie Ellis and the Prisoners um, Alliance, or Community, Alliance in Community, I apologize. It, um, this study, it, it actually um, is in reference to a study uh, published called The Non-Traditional Approach to Criminal and Social Justice in 1990 by the uh, Prisoners Alliance of Community. It's attributed to uh, Eddie Ellis and a few other writers. Uh, so the study actually at that point in time in 1990 said that 
85% of uh, the, the persons detained and incarcerated were either black or brown. And of those 85%, 75% of those came from seven neighborhoods um, at that point in time. So the seven neighborhoods, if I can just pull it up really quickly, were South Jamaica, um, Harlem, oh shoot, South Jamaica, Harlem, Bed-Stuy, um, Crown Heights. I apologize, my computer just went, crashed. Um, so I, I'll follow up with that towards the end. Hopefully my computer will turn back on. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, pay tribute to those that came before and paved the way for a lot of the social justice activists. Um, Cause uh, Eddie Ellis actually helped to found the Center for New Leadership. And uh, that actually, that think tank uh, created a lot of opportunities for people to um, have their voices heard and for redemption to be possible. Um, so let me just go ahead and do that. Um, the seven neighborhood diaspora. Oh, oh shoot, I'm sorry. Give me one moment. Um, give me one moment. We got you, poet. You're fine. Okay, so um, I'm getting a call on my phone. Oh boy, the seven neighborhood diaspora. The seven neighborhood diaspora. Men, women, and children, fathers, sons, mothers, daughters, brothers, sisters, building community is more important than life stocking the prisons. Never past making eye contact, unseeing of the future fortune within, a bone, blood, sweat, tears, nightmare, and dream investment. Beautiful minds impacted by trauma, confused for attention deficit. Wise men said in the past, past the struggles exist the blessings, some innocent and some convicted by the presence of melanin making the wrong decisions in life based off their predecessors who paved the path to hell, to the hell beyond the bars. Never lesser than are we ever. Imagine who we could be if we ever let go of the hurt. Did for community instead of self, brushed off our shoulders the dirt we did and was about what we were born to do. An injustice served, is it, when chains are at the waist, ankles and wrists, legacy for better or worse, survivors, the 85%, never knowing peace from birth. 10 racks or a stack for the coroner. Is that what a black and brown life's worth? While three hots a cot in a wake up remains the, the, the motive for prison reform, not one more. No reason ever is there for silver bracelets to be worn. All praises be to Eddie Ellis. For shining the light on the truths of privilege, seven communities brought to ruin by the absence of light within. The fortunate who survive carry the torch for their ancestors. Their legacy is not $40 mandates shelter placements never. Our legacies can be callous hands, pensions, and doctorates. Refusing always chasing after blood money with that being said, for those who never make it back, a moment of silence. For those burying cells before their time, a moment of silence. For those who won't become their dreams, a moment of silence. For those who can't be more than cast as the villain, a moment of silence is necessary. If I'm to be, to be remembered for saying one thing, let it be, let's not become the better versions of ourselves after the blood spilt and black and brown fathers matter. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, the piece is actually uh, an homage to Eddie Ellis and those that came before, but also it's, uh, it's a cautionary tale of the importance of returning back to community with healed hearts and healed minds. Thank you. Felix, I hope you're all clapping, man. It kills me every time. Thank you, poet. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Next up, we're actually lucky enough to have the one and only uh, manager of all things creative arts here at Fortune, Mr. John Runowitz. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Um, and uh, I thank you all for coming. And I see, uh, look. It's just so wonderful to see uh, all these folks here on the panel, but also all the folks who have come to, to, uh, to be in the audience and just check out all the creativity that happens at Fortune every, every day in all these wonderful groups. And this has been going on, as Jamie said, since uh, March. And so uh, I'm going to do something. I, like so many of the folks uh, who work at Fortune, I'm formerly incarcerated uh, myself. And uh, while I was a guest of New York State, uh, I wrote uh, several songs. And this is one that I wrote, and it's really about me coming to terms with where I was in life and, and the 
determining what was important. It's called uh, Keep Each Other Company. I have an old friend and when he turned 50 he said, Lord, you know I love my son and daughter. I work hard. I've been thrifty. But I just can't seem to keep my head above water. So I help him out the best I can, because he does the same for me. Since we were kids, we've always been friends can be. But life just seems to break your heart in ways you can't foresee. Sometimes the best we can do is to keep each other company. The best we can do is to keep each other company. I had an uncle. He always was a joker. So was a heavy smoker. And one day he called to tell me he was dying. When I realized he was serious, I was ready to save the day. I said, I know this thing is hard to be, but we're gonna find a way. He said, I've had a good run and I'm too far gone and chemo's not for me. The best we can do is to keep each other company. Well, the best we can do is to keep each other company. Life is long, then life is short, and you wonder where it went. Years fly by in the blink of an eye, and you wonder what it meant. Some things you change and some you can't. That's the truth you have to own. But there's no need to face it all alone. Now I have a problem. I'm the first to admit it. When I start to drink, I don't know how to stop it. I've always known I gotta quit it. But when I pick up that ball, I always seem to drop it. And after so many years of telling my wife it's a thing I won't discuss, I went to one of those meetings where everyone is anonymous. And it was funny how all those strangers were so similar to me. Sometimes the best we can do is to keep each other company. Well, the best we can do is to keep each other Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I think I pass it back to Jamie. Is that correct, Jamie? Yeah, for sure. Thank okay. you, John. That was great. That was great. Um, now we're going to actually move to the to the uh, theatrical or, or further theatrical uh, aspect of the show. Uh, we are lucky enough to have Gordon Edelstein as a part of our creative arts team, and he's actually going to intro. Uh, scenes from a play, that's a lot. So I'm going to say this right now. If you have smaller human beings, <laughs> younger ones, anywhere within earshot, you know, now would be the time to either scoop them out the room uh, or maybe put us on mute and just watch these fantastic actors' faces. That's up to you. <laughs> Gordon, you ready? I am. Hi, everybody. Uh, in this play today, it features Robert O'Connor as Jackie and Sparks Alexander, 
playing Veronica is Jamie said salty language. Uh, it's a play by Stephen Adley Gurgis, Pulitzer Prize winning playwright, and the title is both salty and peppery. It's called The Motherfucker with the Hat. Take it away. We are at an apartment in Times Square. Jackie is just out of prison, and he brings flowers to his girlfriend, Veronica. Oh my God, are, are those for me? I don't know. Are you my beautiful Boricua, Taino, Mamacita, love me long time, princess fucking beauty queen? Yes, Mr. Man. Uh, then I guess these are yours. And this chocolate bar, and this lotto ticket, and this little tiny fuzzy bear that grips and shit, and hold up. And these two movie tickets to see the movie that's playing at the movie theater later when we go to see the movie. And eat popcorn and junior mints and whatever the fuck else you want. Because you're my fucking beautiful Boricua, Taino, Mamacita, love me long time princess, goddess, supergirl, queen, who happens to be eyeballing the newest member of this city's fine ass working class workforce. You got a job? Yo, let me tell you something about the man you share a bit of love with. When he says, baby, I'm gonna come home with a job today. Oh, the motherfucker delivers. FedEx, <laughs> baby. I am so proud of you. I think I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> me too. You got a job today. I know you did. I did it because of you, Veronica. No, baby, you did it because you the man. That's why you did that shit. I ain't saying I'm not the man, because clearly I am the fucking man. But it's because of you, Veronica, because you want to know why? Why? Because get in this bed right now and let me show you why. Oh, um, let me shower first. I don't care about that. But I want to shower. You like it like that. Jackie, I'll be quick. I love you, Veronica. Oh, let me shower, stupid. Take a shower, mommy, because I'm ready to do work. Oh, yeah? Yo, when I'm done with that ass, that ass is going to, like, levitate three feet off the mattress, and you're going to be like, yo, Jackie, why am I, why me and my ass floating in the air like this? And, and I'll be like... Just, just hold that thought, okay? Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, and, and yo, I didn't even tell you about the best part. Did you tell your P.O. yet? What? Your parole officer, you told him about your job. Yeah, he told me, what do you want? A medal for doing what you're supposed to be doing? But I could tell his ass was happy. I, I, I'm getting in the shower now. Okay, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. If I hook this up right, these people got like five buildings. I could go from Porter to maybe even a super because I already got the repair shit down. And then you get free rent and cable and even free internet for like emails and shit, union benefits, and they got a strong ass union. And anyway, I started thinking, Veronica, you know, and I started making plans, you know, like grown up plans, like you and me plans, happy plans, like next step plans. He stops. He notices a hat on the table. He fixates on it. He looks at the hat and examines it. He picks up the hat and sniffs it. He looks around the room. Then he goes to the bed. He smells the sheets and the pillows. Veronica enters from the shower. She looks good and she knows it. I look good, right? Hey, you, um, yeah. <laughs> you had to think about it? Nah. What? Um, someone was here? No, why? Nah, just nobody was here? Uh, I thought I just answered that. Um, what's up with the hat? What hat? That hat over there, that man hat, that ain't my hat. That's right over there. That, that's not your hat? Anything you need to say. About what? You don't need to say nothing? Jackie. Don't jackie me, okay? I'm calm, I'm civil, I'm polite. And? You know my mother gave us this bed, right? Oh, if you've got something to say, why don't you just leave your fucking mother out of it and say what you gotta say? The hat, it ain't mine. So, 
It's probably your friends or your fucking sponsors or whoever the fuck else comes over here sometimes. The old man down the hallway, you know, that's always coming the fuck by. I don't know. You don't know. You know what? Go fuck yourself. I don't know what your problem is and I don't know why you're bugging the fuck out over a hat that could belong to anybody. You're right. I know I'm fucking right. Fuck the hat. Fuck the hat. That's what I said. Fuck the hat. All right, good. Fuck it. That's right. The hat. Fuck it. Okay, then. That hat, that's a hat I got no interest in. All right, so how about my apology now? You got any interest in that? The bed. What about the bed? Aqua velvet and dick. Why the bed smells like aqua velvet and dick? Huh? You know what? You're crazy. You know that? I'm crazy. Yo, head of the bed, aqua velvet, mid-bed fucking dick. Here, smell it. Smell that shit and tell me it ain't dick. Yeah, acting fucking retarded. Just, just. Because I'm trying very hard not to leap to conclusions, Veronica, but I'm a bit, I don't know, unable to figure the fuck out why this bed, my mother's fucking bed. Oh, again with your fucking mother. You watch your mouth about my mother. Oh, watch my mouth about your mother. No, you watch my mouth about your mother. Fuck your mother, okay? Fuck your fucking mother and her bitch ass big deal secondhand bed and fuck her bitch ass son, okay? Get the fuck out. My sponsor told me you were a little fucking whore and I didn't believe him. Oh, fuck your sponsor. Who was it? <laughs> Go lick your sponsor's fucking balls, you bitch. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. You think I won't kill you because I'm a nice guy? But believe me, I don't give a fuck about nothing right now. And I will end your life like you just ended mine. You just stay away from me. Oh, what? You gonna hit me with that? Oh, you back the fuck off, bitch. I don't play that punching doorbag shit. Who was it? Just tell me who. That's all I want to know. Who was who? There was no who, cause no one did nothing over here. And you're out your mind sitting there playing Sherlock Holmes, cause, cause I don't know why. Jackie starts dressing. What, what are you doing? Jackie, what are you doing? Jackie takes a liquor bottle from the microwave. What are you, what are you doing? What are you, you gonna, you gonna drink? It was that motherfucker downstairs, wasn't it? That motherfucker with the hat. He's always wearing a hat. And now suddenly I got an unidentified fucking hat sitting on my breakfast table. Jackie, don't get this twisted because I personally don't care what you do. But if you want my advice, I'd put down the bottle and go to a fucking meeting or something and, and meet up with that sponsor or whatever. You're so lucky I don't hit women. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking four-leaf clover. Let's, let's go down to the casino and win a million bucks. Make jokes. Jokes are funny. Okay, 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 okay. You know, you know what? Let's, let's go down to the pie place, all right? What? Look, let's, let's just go there to the pie place, and we'll have, like, some pie, and, and, and we'll just, like, talk, you know, using these two, like, and, like we used to do, you know? And, and, and for now, I, I'm whittling to put the ghetto on hold. Um, you know, if, if you're willing to entertain the fact that you're, you're a retarded ex-con who almost blew it because, because I don't know, you got an imagination like, like Dr. Seuss and shit, you know? <laughs> but you're lying. God damn it. Look at me. I didn't fuck nobody. I, and I've been wronged here. You wronged me. You hurt me really, really fucking badly. But I'm going to concede to you. <laughs> But you know what? It ain't no small concession because I love that ass. So let's go get some fucking pie, you know, before someone here says something that can't be changed. All right, Jackie? Okay? End of scene. Good Lord. <laughs> Sparks and Robin killing us. So good. We can oh, talk. Okay. We'll hear more from this play later. I also want to Sparks is zooming in from Houston, Texas. All right. Yeehaw! All right. <laughs> Shout out, Texas. But this, right, like of the, 
of the silver linings and, and, and moments of joy that, you know, these last few months, we know this, this is rough. This is, you know, not easy. And the rays of light, sparks can come through from Texas. We can still build community across the nation. That's, you know, Zoom, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? We get sparks. We're all right. <laughs> so um, part again of like to, to give you a glimpse uh, to the joy um, that we're doing here, another incredible member of the creative arts team, Mr. Guy Woodard, our resident uh, teaching artist. He has been doing uh, his drawing class and we're actually gonna share a, a quick uh, clip from his class. So you have an idea and a flavor um, of what the group looks like. Okay, this is a 4-H. Now with the same pressure, this is how light the 4-H is. This is how light the 4-H is. Now this is a 4-B, the same pressure. You see it's much, much darker. And in between, let's say this is an HB, which is right in the middle between B and H. B is soft and, and dark, and H is light. This is right in between. And that's how you get your light and dark professionally. I mean, you can do it with this pressure, but it, it comes out better when you have the pencil, the, a lighter pencil and a darker pencil. Today, we're not using that many because you won't have that many to begin with. Let's see, we're just going to do a nose. Let's see. Just going to the bridge. Bring it down. Right. Uh, should I take it from here, Jamie? Yes. Yeah. So there you go. That's a little, just a little piece of what uh, Guy's been doing online in our online classy. And so uh, I'd like to introduce everyone uh, to Mr. Guy Woodard. Guy, if you could unmute and uh, say hello. Oh, I didn't know I was muted. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, here's the rest of that nose. Can you see it? Can you get a little closer to the camera? There you go. OK, right. that's the rest of that note. Uh, yeah, well, I'm doing simple things that you can do in one class. Uh, you, most people never have drawn before that are my students. And you could always do something credible. This is just one example. I just, this is one class. And everybody can complete this in one class, one hour or less. Uh, but that's just, I, I do the basics. Uh, I've been doing recently one point perspective. This is very easy, but it makes it look like a real room. Hold it up just landscape. a little bit, a little higher, a little higher. Yeah, and then back a little bit. Yeah, so you can see it's a room. There you go. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, but it's done a perspective. It's very, very simple. Everything I teach is very, very simple. Most people think it's got to be complicated to be art. You don't have to be Picasso to make something very credible. So great. You know, uh, I, I'd love to bring in David just for the moment, uh, David Rothenberg, our founder, uh, just to tell a little quick short story about how Guy came to us in the, in the in, I guess, a couple of years ago, right? It's been a few years now. David, can you unmute? Yeah. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Everyone, the founder of the Fortune Society, David Rothenberg. Yay. Yay. Hi, <laughs> I, uh, Guy, are you comfortable with me telling the story? Absolutely. Yes? I'm comfortable with anything you do. I do a radio program on Saturday mornings on WBAI. On one day, they said, there's a guy waiting for you downstairs. And I said, does he have a gun? And they said, no, he has pictures. <laughs> so I went downstairs, and Guy said he'd just come home. He'd been listening to me on the radio. And he was staying in a shelter, and he showed me these, his etchings. 
he etched them uh, with a ballpoint pen because they wouldn't let him use paint up north. And I said, you're in a shelter with these paintings? These paintings are too good to stay in a shelter. I didn't say he was too good. I just you gotta get, come to Fortune on Monday morning, get those paintings out of the shelter. And oh, by the way, you should get out of the shelter too. And Guy got into the castle with his, with his beautiful paintings. And, well, pick it, you take it from there, Guy. It's your story, not mine. Well, you know what? I think we're, are we gonna show our video now? Is that correct? Am I right, Jamie? Yeah, let's do it. And then just as a heads up, Dawood, we know you, you're a man with, uh, with lots of, uh, <laughs> Dawood, one of our uh, artists, is, is literally double booked today. So brother, we're going to show the video real quick, and then you're going to be up. Sound good? Good. Yeah, that's awesome. Dawood. He's, right, our, right yeah. He's, he's a saxophone player. We're going to bring him. But I just wanted to do it now because in this video, you'll see examples of some of Guy's work uh, and all the work we do at Fortune. So Stephanie, our wonderful communications uh, expert, please take it away. Uh, just a minute, but I may not get back on. That play was terrific. Okay. <laughs> it really was. Fortune Society offered me a variety of opportunities and the tools they threw me a god in me to be a better man than I ever envisioned I could be. Help me see who I'm meant to be rather than who I gotta be. They building people, not prisons. What they unlocked in me was so electrifying, it sort of came as a shock to me. Cause I was headed down the path of destruction. Not to the people, I'm so different from my last introduction. My drive is at its best. I'm no longer lost in the matrix. On the road to success with a full tank and a destination of places that were forsaken to heights that were hidden see fortune was my optician they enlightened my vision couldn't see the bigger picture my sights were stuck on the foolishness anger was my drug had to learn how to stop abusing it patience what i'm cruising with done with the fast course and it's plain to see i'm going places minus the passport you pain, I, see. I can't let it get the best of me the one is misfortune i'm still chasing my fortune there's no love out here in these streets I see a brand new life for me The world is misfortune I'm so thankful for fortune a lot of people miss shots on them same courts where the greats played. I was the man that made mistakes, now I'm the man mistakes made. I'm warming up to go higher, hot air ballooning it. Had I not learned from my ludicrous ways, I'd be a lunatic. I done sat in the room with this empty feeling of losing it. Dark days in the cell, the thought of change made it luminous. We ought to woke to our futures, can't let the past sleep us. It's time to show them the vision, we could be math teachers. I still envision them shootouts ever so vividly. The night that bullet pierced through my skin, that could have been it. For me, look death in his eyes and saw how much I want to live. When I started valuing time, I ain't have no more to give. No more making temporary things, my mission at hand. Separate what's written in stone from what's written in sin. I refuse to let my story end where he was a good kid. Rather say, change the world, what a kid from the hood did. Well, the heart, it can pain, I, see. I can't let it get the best of me. The world is misfortune. I'm still chasing my fortune. There's no love out here in these streets I see a brand new life for me The world is misfortune I'm so thankful for fortune Well, I'll start clapping now. Very good. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, wonderful. wonderful great. Thank that. you. And the, um, this clip will also be available, is already available on YouTube. You know, Zoom got us a little out of sync, but it's such an incredible song. The, the, the artist 
Um, so the entire song was produced and written by Fortune participants. Mr. Mo Money Santana, those, those are his, uh, those are his words. That's his heart uh, that you're that you're listening to. Also, the song is available with um, many other songs and some spoken word pieces. Fortune. Uh, for the first time in its history, uh, put out a, we refer to it as an EP, but we shared, we shared an album. The artist created an incredible album. So we'll be able to, in, in a, you'll probably fresh and bright and early tomorrow, you'll get a pipe and hot email uh, directly from us. That'll include the link uh, to that clip that you just saw and to the full SoundCloud, not to mention the 2020 edition of Voices of Fortune. We'll tell you more about that later. All right, but Mr. Dawood, you ready? Yeah, maybe. John, do you want to offer some words? Yes. Uh, folks, uh, Dawood came to us maybe about a year or so ago and already well advanced as a musician. And he's just made leaps and bounds recently. And now he is getting lessons from, uh, for instance, Don Braden, one of the great saxophone players right now in the, in, in the world, in the jazz saxophone players. And he's actually running off to lesson at five. So he's going to give us a nice uh, taste of what he can do. And uh, so, Please, Dawood, take it away and unmute, sir. Un unmute, yep. There you go. And Mr. Dave Colvin, you're up next, brother. We know that you gotta, there, there are people to feed at the castle. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Saul. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so we're going to quickly to David Coleman super patiently as there's work to be done, but he's going to he's going to hit us with some of his soul first, forming uh, an original song uh, that he co-wrote, uh, and he's going to do it for right now. Go ahead, Mr. Dave. Hey, song. Uh... About a year ago, I did a show trying to tell my story called Three Chords and the Truth. And me and my friend, Warner Williams, we were looking for a song that would be able to tell what it's like when you're in that cell by yourself or in a room and you're at your lowest point. And so we found some songs where the music was cool, but the lyrics weren't right. The lyrics were right, but the music wasn't cool. So we just wrote this song. It's called Battle of the Soul. Just to 
gaze beyond the abyss where God awaits. Is it worth the pain in tearing myself apart? Rebuild the foundation, have a change of heart. I shout to bless I walk. On my way to broken dreams There's a door ahead A little crack in time A glimmer of hope Maybe it's mine a crack in the dark A glimmer of a cry Tiny beam of light just a little spark Calling me back to myself Staring me in the eye Do I have the strength to die With that dead open stuck gate The courage to gaze beyond the abyss Where God awaits Is it worth the pain Tearing myself apart, refill the foundation, have a change of heart. Answer to your question is yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always somebody listening. <laughs> we are, brother. I promise. We are. We are. Okay. So next up, we're moving on to an incredible poet, Mr. Hilton Webb, and then Lotus, you're on deck, my love. Hello, everyone. Oh, Hilton, you got muted again accidentally. Um, there you are. Okay, sorry about that. My name is Hilton Webb, and uh, this poem I wrote a few years ago when I was uh, an extended vacation in Attica Correctional Facility. It's called Every Woman. I am the Jew you stripped, whipped, and gassed at Auschwitz, all in the name of racial purity. 
I am the Lakota you lied to and whose sacred black hills you then stole to search for worthless yellow rocks. I am the woman you told, you want it, I know you do, as you rape me and burn the memory of horror into my soul for a lifetime. I am the child that weeps softly to myself in fear and loneliness, the one who fears, tonight you'll touch me again. I am the immigrant who believed the lies of freedom and who wanted to walk on streets paved with golden dreams. I am one of the have-nots waiting for the haves to save me one small crumb off their overflowing tables of success. And yes, I am the black man who proves by his very presence today that he has become an anachronism in this country. You see, I've always known who I was, for I recognize the multitude of voices inside me. Who in the hell are you, my friend? And do you ever hear the voices in the lives you've lived? Thank you. Thank you, Hilton. Ooh, brother Bear. I love that poem. All right, Ms. Lotus, you ready to do this? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm echoing because I hear everybody. But hello, everyone. This is Lotus. And um, considering everything going on with the pandemic and everything, I just thought the most appropriate song to do was to stand up for love. It's all about being united and not forgetting the people that we lost and the people are behind the wall. Uh, the song is called Stand Up for Love. Or like I think I'm not saying, but you know, but I'll improvise anyway. So rainy. All right. <laughs> there are times I find it hard to sleep at night. We are living through such troubled times. And every child that reaches out to someone to hold in one moment, they become my own. And how can I pretend that I don't know what's going on when every second of every minute another soul is gone? And I believe that in my life I will see an end to hopelessness and giving up of suffering. If we all stand together this one time, no one will get us behind. Stand up for life. Stand up for life. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm in fire <clears throat> and hope for peace. I'm sorry, every day. <laughs> I need to drink some water. That's how I know that things are gonna change. How can I pretend that I don't know what's going on when every second of every minute another soul is gone? And I believe that in my life I will see an end to hopelessness and giving up our suffering. If we all stand together this one time, no one will get left behind. Stand up for life. Stand up. For life. Thank you. Lotus. Look, I just said I'm crying now, <laughs> right? Because I the first time I ever met Lotus, 
she was singing. Yeah. I cried then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm crying now. So then up next, from one beautiful, exquisite woman to another. Here we go, Becky. You ready? Becky Jane Dunham. Thanks, Jamie. This is Dreamers, Artists, and Creators, a poem about why I love the earth. My medium was soil, dark and moist, tribal and fertile. I would dig my fingers in deep and wiggle them, let the earth fall between them, shape the furrows, form them, draw lines, make rows, poke holes, needing neither round nor square. This canvas three-dimensional and seasonal. My tools, my paint, small specks of seed and gnarly knobby tubers, thin, thready newborn roots and their sticky, stabby older sisters cloned by dividing, inarguably coexisting and surviving. Through all the spacing and replacing, the tagging and the tracing, all the constant rearranging, everlasting, ever-changing, in a timeless symphony they bloom, just for the joy of it, to bear their fruit to be consumed, ensuring all our survival. I do not work alone, oh no, by inner voice and spirit moving. My canvas is the living earth and subject to her moods and warnings, the ones of elements non-conforming nature's universal laws, and life's longing to be born, to propagate and perpetuate. It is here I find not just belonging, but true acceptance and my freedom. No one notices mistakes, for here even they have place. If all goes well, we work together, hands, seeds, soil, and sun, cycles of the moon, wind and water, each moment a new masterpiece for all of our enjoyment, never again to be repeated. Each one its own special note, this living landscape dances for all of our inhabitants. Despite the prep and all the planning, it is all really quite by chance and circumstance. Life will move on unheeding of my busy hands and constant weeding. All will turn out how she planned and they will come to visit her and see it. All her creatures, great and small, to leave their unique mark, each playing their unique part. My fellow dreamers, artists, and creators included with interpretations all their own and hope to inspire all and everyone to come and join us in the fun. To take a look and follow us on our journeys upon and with this living friend and collaborator, nurturer of body, soul, and spirit, terrestrial home, and dancer mother. Becky, you did it! You did it, Howard. It was great. Right on. Yeah, Howard, we're so proud of you. All right, Mr. Gerard, Mr. Gerard Tonella, you ready for this? Marvin, you're on deck, my love. Oops. Yes, I'm ready. Take okay, it away, this, Howard. Okay, this piece is called An Onion. I have always thought of myself as kind of plain, vanilla even, pardon the pun. I was always the guy who was uninteresting, predictable, and common. Oh boy, did I have it all wrong. I have learned lots of things about myself on my voyage of self-discovery. First, I am very interesting, complex even. I am incredibly unique, worth getting to know. I am very talented. I am now just discovering new talents I never thought I had. One talent is writing, for example. I would have never written this if I had not taking the time to examine myself from within. I am just realizing something 
a friend of mine told me recently, I always say I want to be great at some time in the future. The reality is if I look close, I am already great right now. I never thought I'd say that. And as I continue to explore my inner workings, I will be even better. I have discovered many talents that will take my life in many different directions and on many different adventures. I can do whatever I choose within the bounds of the law, of course. No new arrests 2020. No new arrests ever. I have discovered something really unique. I have discovered me. And as another friend said to me, you need to find out who you are and be comfortable with that. That's the challenge. I'm enjoying the journey, at least at times. I'm like an onion. There are so many different layers to me. So many different experiences that make me unique and wonderful. I am someone worth getting to know. I look forward to further self-exploration, but I am in a unique position. <clears throat> I know what's at the center of the onion. I know what makes me who I am. At my core, I am very kind, loving, and giving of my myself. At my core is the heart of a champion, a heart of gold. That is an amazing thing. Even more amazing is how my perception has changed. Thank you all. It did it, Gerard. Oh, that was great. That was so good. All right, Mr. Marvin Wade. I did it. I did it with the Boston accent. I slipped right into it. Mr. Marvin Wade. <laughs> Marvin. Thank you, Jamie. Good afternoon, Fortune family. The words you're about to hear are from a spiritual activist. Black men on black men violence is an urgent issue, just as policemen on black men violence is an urgent issue. But to me, these are mutually exclusive issues. And one of the major reasons why I feel this way and they need to be dealt with separately is the fact that in cases involving black men on black men violence, there's an immediate arrest, charge, and conviction. But in cases involving policemen on black men violence, there's usually no arrest, no charges, and never any convictions. So I hate when I hear black and white folks from the right and the left bring up black on black violence every time we are having a discussion about police violence. These are two separate but serious issues that need time, passion, and commitment from everyone to be resolved. In my opinion, when we combine the two issues into one argument, we weaken our ability to have a positive impact on either, which is the plan of the oppressors. They don't want either issue to have a resolution. Their goal is to create division within the community and keep black men dying in the street, whether by our own hands or by the hands of police. So I say let's stay focused, brothers and sisters. I thank you and peace. I also would like to take this time out to please, if you haven't responded to 2020 Census, please do so at 2020census.gov, or you can contact me at mwade at fortunesociety.org. Let's get counted. Thank you. Yes, Marvin, thank you for all of <laughs> for your work, for your light, and for the reminder, and for the reminder. This is how we show up. Okay, so, uh, I see him. Mr. Panna, you ready, Brother Bear? He's thinking about it. I think he's ready. <laughs> all right, uh, up next, he's giving me the high signs. Up next is the one, the only, a one of one, Mr. Nestor Panama Eversley. Oh, he tipped his hat. Brother, you got to unmute. Everybody, I would like to ask for a moment of silence for John Lewis, who passed away recently. And now, I like to talk about this corona stuff. I was laying in bed, and uh, I was listening to the news, and this came to mind. Corona, Corona, how I despise you. For one, I can't find you. You hide. You're invisible. But believe me, one of these days, a smart guy will find you. And when he does, he will destroy you. No more pain. No more debts because of you. Goodbye, you sneaky devil. Goodbye, mi amigo. 
Rest in peace. From your destruction, we have learned to survive, to call for transformation. We have learned to wear a mask, not to rob, but in service. We have learned to social distance, translated into keep six feet apart. We are seeing love and kindness from complete strangers. The dedication of many, even unto death. We have learned new technology, Zoom, remote learning, and working from home. We have also learned that no man is an island. From this virus, this virus has spread from over a four and a half million people in America alone. And, uh, to, and uh, from today, there's 150,000 that have died from this corona. Goodbye, goodbye. That's it. So proud of you, Panna. Awesome, Panna. You did it. You did the damn thing, Panna. I'm so proud of you. I'm, guys, I cry and I, <laughs> for a lot of reasons, right? Current, current and necessary. And I'm so damn proud of you, Panna. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna pull myself, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna pull myself together. And um, Fortune can't do what it does and can't actually live in its mission without um, community partners and without an incredible uh, collection of dedicated volunteers. Um, we are lucky enough to be able to collaborate and share joy uh, with one such great uh, volunteer. Vicki Darden has joined in um, on all of our creative writing workshops and has become part of our family. You guys, like, it's, it's bananas how people, how people show up and uh, we are grateful. So Vicki is going to show up yet again uh, in a moment right on your, on your screens and is, is going to step in to amplify the words of a Fortune community member who, who's behind the walls of state. And we're going to reverberate and sort of spread love so that he can hear us, uh, hopefully feel us right now. We can't wait for him to come home. Vicky Darden will share the words of Miguel Alvario. I will say his name again, Miguel Alvario. She's gonna share his work. Thank you, Jamie. Self-victimized by Miguel Alvario. I tend to move almost blindly. And when the cause takes effect, I neglect responsibility, then let the pain define me. So sadistic, addicted to the discomfort, I allow it. It prevents me from moving upward. So statistics remind me I'm overexpired at my weakest point, standing strong in defiance. Thinking I'm at my best when I'm stressed, hungry, lonely, and tired, embracing my pain, looking for the joy in tomorrow, I only worry when my soul isn't crying, self-victimized. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> Thank you, Miguel, for the words. Thank you, Vicki, for, for sending them out. All right, up next, we have... Unmuted. Unmuted, official, official. We got you, we got you. Great stuff. So, so I'm here to tell you why I'm venting. I'm venting, I'm very angry. I'm an angry, angry black man here in America, okay? So I'm just venting to ease away my pain. I'm venting because things have got to change. I'm venting to keep from going insane. So I air it out. That's why I'm venting. I'm venting. See, I'm tired of letting it slide. I'm venting. I'm hurting inside. The things I've seen, the things I've been through inside, the mass incarceration, the genocide. So I vent. 
I let it out. I let it out. They say anger is poison, so I get it out. Some say I'm angry. I say more than a little bit. Imagine being hunted by cops as a little kid, sent up north on faultly indictments, finding yourself in solitary confinement. Come home, can't get a job, got a felony. Mind so twisted, I'm seeking therapy. BLC shout out, by the way. As the world turns, I've read about real life. My hands behind my back cuffed real tight. Pain feels like I'm cutting my wrist off. Go ahead, ask me why I'm pissed off. You already know what this thing had for. What y'all think I'm standing here venting for? Just trying to send me for the fall. So let a brother vent. I ain't tripping, y'all. I'm just vent. So don't ask me to chill. I'm venting the sisters up in Bedford Hills. I could only imagine the pain they feel being away from their kids. Now that pain is real. I'm venting for the brothers in Clinton, Dan, and Mora, where the food is nasty and the cells are tore up. Too many scars, too many faces. I'm venting to keep from losing my patience. I'm just venting, y'all. See, I'm venting because it feels like the weight of the world is on my shoulder. The injustice I'm enduring makes me colder. And as I grow older, I find myself fighting hard every day just to stay sober. I'm up against a system who's built on racism. Instead of schools, I'd rather build state prisons. I'm venting because it's so disgusting how they lynch black boys through criminal justice. Vent. I hear my emotional scars of the years spent behind steel gates and bars. Pardon me, y'all, but I really need a vent. Eviction notice. I can't pay my rent. On top of that, I've got open cases. My lawyer's an asshole. The judge are racist. So basically, anytime I find myself stressing out, I vent. Safe way to let it out. DLC, Better Living Center. Peace. Fuck, you did it. <laughs> uh, I just want to point out that the, uh, the, the full sort of culmination um, of, of Doc's vision for that piece uh, is set to music. Uh, he was able to co direct. A, uh, a video, we keep throwing up the link to the video, to the YouTube clip um, in the chat. Please see it. Um, we just want to specify that we were going to do it here, but it's, it's too powerful and we just didn't want Zoom to like, you know, slow us down any. Um, so you, you have the link in the chat and then tomorrow uh, we'll, we'll send out the link to Doc's video. You can view it um, at, your, at your pleasure, super powerful. So I've been told I think that Mr. Milton and Mr. Robert are maybe back. Is that true, Gordon? He's getting my uh, sense. So moved to a different spot. Uh, hopefully there won't be an echo. And uh, Robert's right here. Yeah, so let's kick it. Because everyone, every, this is, thank you for everyone hanging in. We've gone over time, but we're going to honor the work that they've put in and the heart that they've put in. And so we're going to, let's do this. You ready, Mr. Milton? Stairs to make sure Milton's okay, Robert. I hope. <laughs> hey. Hello, Robert. Are, are you cool? Yeah. Just wait until. Uh, yeah, we're uh, just going to wait for two seconds. Everyone will take a breath. You guys have put in a lot of work, and so we, uh, we want to see at least try to see if we can share. If technology is trying to. Trying to best us, you know, we'll try to, we'll do our best to try to best them back. Um, what I will do in this moment then is, so of the many reasons um, that we're celebrating today and that we're, we're going together is uh, all things arts related and healing and community related at Fortune. We're, and then part of that is the uh, official release of the 2020 edition of Voices of Fortune. You will receive, all the entire audience will receive, people are clapping. Yes. That might be my mom. 
and John. <laughs> so everyone will, um, will receive the digital version uh, tomorrow, fresh, hot, and delicious uh, in your inbox. The, um, the collection, so it's an annual publication of poetry and artwork for and from the Fortune community. Uh, this edition includes voices that are um, in community and folks that are still behind the walls, folks that at the time of submission were still on Rikers Island, but we also um, have developed a profound community partnership with men that are currently incarcerated in California, like Liam, one of the uh, poets that you heard at the top of the um, at the top of the show, their work is also included. So it's like a, an act of some East Coast, West Coast love. Uh, so, so they are also uh, included. I will take this opportunity right now to shout out the one and only uh, Vinny DeVito, who designed the, this edition, his friendship and his vision. It's bananas. You guys are going to flip out. I like, I'm like sweating. I get so excited uh, talking about it. Okay, so we think I'm trying to get the high signs. Gordon, how are we feeling about Milton? How's Milton yeah. feeling? Uh, yeah, can you can you hear me, Jamie? Oh yes, we can. Yes, yeah, we hear you. We hear you. Victorious. Let's do it, brother. You got this. Take a breath. Don't worry about anything else that came before. You did this. You've worked so hard. You've got this. You got it. Okay, we're gonna oh. start over. <laughs> so we're gonna start over from from the top. Yep, Robert. Yeah. All right, we're gonna start from the top. All Sorry, right. folks, technical difficulties. Okay, this okay. is uh, Jackie arriving at Ralph, who's his sponsor after his meltdown with, uh, with Veronica. And uh, here it goes. Yeah. Right in my face, she lied. Sit down, man. I'm telling you, I need a fucking gun, bro. First off, you need to calm down. Oh, calm. Not Jackie calm, higher power calm. I'm calm. I'm really, really very calm. Calm enough to pray with me? Pray? Pray, yes. You remember prayer, right? That little thing we do that saves our ass when we're about to lose our minds over nothing 25 times a day? Bro, I already prayed like a lot, okay? So pray again, right now. I'll get the fuck out. How's that? Fine. God, hello again. You may remember that I already prayed to you like 57 fucking times on my way over here. Stop messing around. Fine. God, I'm here at Ralph's. I didn't kill anybody or pick up a drink. So thank you. Seriously, thank you. Okay. Say amen. Amen. Good. Thank you. Now, did you read page 449 in the big book like I suggested? I did. Did you journal about it? Bro, I hear you. And no, I didn't journal, but I did read it. And I plan to journal like soon. Hold up. Sweetie, could you blender up my sponsor? A nice nutritional beverage, please? Okay, Don't honey. Yourself, Ralph. Okay, honey, I'll do that. Anyway, where were we? I was asking, could your cousin Philly get me a gun, please? Big book, third edition, page 449. It says what? Acceptance. That's right. Acceptance what? Acceptance, it's the answer. No, it says acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. And what day are we concerned with here? Ralph, man, I understand that shit, like in theory. How's it been working for you so far? Yeah, man, pretty good. But now you want to go from the AA practice back to the Jackie practice? I'm not saying that. Okay, look, man, I'm going to make this real simple for you. If the Dwayne Reed is on fire, and I know it's on fire, and yet I keep running back in because I left two bucks in my wallet on the counter, and I... Running back out 
looking like the human torch from the Fantastic Four. Okay. Robert, yeah, I'm still here. with me? I'm, I'm here. Okay. Let me, give you, let me give you my cue again. Our cue again. Okay, look, man, I'm going to give this to you real simple. I'm going to make this real simple for you. If the Dwayne Reed is on fire, and I know it's on fire, and yet I keep running back in because I left two bucks in my wallet on the counter, and I come running back out looking like the human torch from the Fantastic Four, but without the superpowers, and I start crying, look at me, Jackie, woe is me. I'm engulfed in flame like a fucking marshmallow at the bottom of the campfire, then what are you going to tell me? What the fuck are you talking about? Your girlfriend is an addict, and she has many qualities that even to the casual observer would seem to indicate that she has basic fundamental issues with impulse control and making good judgments. Do I need to say more? Victoria, seriously, a beverage for my sponsor would be very nice. You know what, what would be nice, Ralph? If you drop dead of a fucking coronary, that would be nice. Acceptance. See, my wife is the reincarnation of Benito Mussolini. What do I do? Acceptance. 449. Learn it. Live it. Be free. Yo, if Veronica spoke to me like that. Oh, she don't speak to you like that? Yeah, I mean, she does, but. But the difference between Victoria and your girl is that Victoria is in recovery. And your girl, she was, she's a wild fucking animal who was raised by wolves in fucking Puerto Rican Transylvania, okay? And that's the problem, as evidenced by you showing up here looking for weaponry. I gotta go. If you go back to her, you'll be using again within 24 hours, you know that. You ain't going back to her, fuck her. You see, now you're being sensible. In fact, you know what? You should stay with us for a while. Nah. Yo, I'm serious. We got room. And I'll tell you what, one month with us, you'll be shocked at what a new man you'll become. We got all kinds of health foods here, bro. And not just the beverages. Victoria, she prepares all kinds of healthy dishes, soy and tofu and fresh vegetables. You ever try yoga, bro? Um, it's on my list. Yeah, okay, funny, but really, is your life a joke, Jackie? No. What about your recovery? Something funny about that? Nah, oh, man, and I mean, I do got a list. I got no doubt you do, and I'm here to tell you directly, fuck the list, man. That's right, stop making lists. And start living the damn list. Can you do that? I can. And isn't that what you really want to do anyway? It is. I know it is. I mean, I always thought yoga and fucking soy milk and shit, they're for fucking assholes, right? I mean, yeah, kind of. Exactly. Well, guess what? I'm an asshole, bro. And so are you. Who else but a couple of real fucking assholes would end up messing up their lives so bad that they had to go to meetings all the time and pray and be honest and do all that bullshit because if they didn't, they'd be fucking dead in a year. So yeah, we're fucking assholes, but it's okay. Hence, yoga. And hey, I may be an asshole, but I'm fucking limber, bro. 
And I like it. This situation with your girl, it's a blessing in disguise. And you know I'm right. And the fact that she would cheat on you is proof. And believe me, anybody that would cheat on you once will do it again. It's what they call the cycle of self-sabotage. That's what addicts do. They self-sabotage. My life isn't about bullshit and heartache no more. And yours doesn't have to be either. And you're doing so good. But in order to change, you got to change, man. Ralph. Yes, honey. Could you take it outside now, please? My show's about to start. You don't want to watch your show in the bedroom where it's more comfortable? Are you asking me if I'd rather watch it on a nine inch screen in there rather than on a 58 plasma out here that I said we couldn't afford, but we went ahead and bought it anyway? I'm gonna split, bro. Split where? To get a gun and do something stupid? No. To go back to Veronica? No. To drink? Something like that. Ralph. You're not going to confront this motherfucker with the hat, right? Nah, man. I'm going to walk. Hit a meeting, come back, and crash on the couch. You, you made a lot of good points, and what you talked about, I want that. Got to work for it. I know. Which meeting you going to? Probably like the 10 o'clock on 46th. Probably? Not probably, definitely. Good. Call me if you're feeling fucked up. Yeah, bro, absolutely. No guns, no bullshit, right, man? Nah. Proud of you. Thank you, Ralph. Don't thank me. You're doing it yourself. Nah, thank you, thank you. It's what we do. And remember, bro, no stinking thinking. Be wise like Abe Lincoln. No doubt, bro. No doubt. End of scene. We did it! <laughs> Yay! 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 And, and I want to say something. Milton, you exemplified exactly the work that we're doing. Nothing beat you. Robert, you hung in. That's what this is, dude. We're talking resilience, man. And you were like, I know it's frustrating and you work so hard, but dude, you did it and you came through. And there are people who are still on and we are still here and we love you and you did a great job. Everybody did. We did it. Yeah. The first ever virtual arts showcase. We're done. I see, Anna, I see everybody. Feel free to unmute all of the panelists. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. David Rothenberg, do you want to say a few words, Mr. Sir? Uh, and of course you must unmute, sir. <laughs> unmute, unmute, unmute. unmute David. That says unmute. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hat trick on ice. <laughs> Am I unmuted? Yes. Now you are. I'm unmuted now. Uh, this was wonderful. You, you know, fortune started as a result of a play as Marvin told us at the beginning, but there's nothing more exciting than, than people using the arts as part of their discovering themselves. And, and you know what, to get affirmation, a lot, a lot of the folks who've come to Fortune, the only time they got attention is when they did negative things. And it's so important to get applause, to get people to say what you're doing, what you're creating is so exciting and making me feel better. So you all should be so proud of yourselves. And um, I congratulate everyone, it was wonderful. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank Good night, everybody. I'm cooking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Please stay on your diet, please. Yes, you thank you to all of the artists. Thank you to John. Thank you to Gordon. Uh, thank you to Vicky. Stephanie Geyer, my God, we're going to build a mountain to you, bring candles <laughs> to it. We're going to.